Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. If you're looking for a fun activity this weekend for both you and your pet, look no further than the Lloydminster Pet Expo. I had the chance to find out more about this annual event. Today I'm joined by Bernie Funk, who is the creator of the Pet Expo that is coming up this weekend. And to start, can you talk to me a little bit about what spurred you in creating this expo to begin with? Pet Expo was started because of people not being aware of all the uh, rescues and the pet related businesses that are out there. Um, so I started it in 2016 to uh, let the public know that there are a lot of rescues and shelters out there that need help or if someone is looking for a pet to adopt that there is more than just the SPCA type thing. Um, and it's grown over the last few years to draw in about three to 4,000 people at every show. And um, it's gained a lot of popularity and, and reputation throughout the provinces, actually. What sort of activities will be going on during the expo for those interested? There's a lot of going on, actually. I, I try to have entertainment for everybody. Um, there is There will be a bounce castle. There's always concession. There's uh, This year, there's going to be petting zoo and pony rides. Uh, from my pony party in Edmonton. Uh, there are a couple of rescues attending. Lots of pets to see, of course, because it is a pet expo and uh, and um, a lot of pet experts, pet food, pet wellness, that kind of thing. And of course, people are allowed to bring their pets to the show. Can you speak a little on the vendors that you already have booked? Sort of what can we be looking forward towards? It's a wide variety of vendors, actually. There's everything from uh, people who make pet treats, pet toys, uh, accessories, to uh, there's a couple of pet stores from Lloyd that will be attending. Um, and then, of course, there's a lot of non-pet related businesses, you know, like your ordinary, everyday type business. So it, it's a show for everybody. What are some of your big goals that you'd like to take away from this event? My biggest uh, reward is seeing people happy at this event. Um, the more people I bring together and the more people that enjoy themselves is my reward for all the hard work I put into it. That's basically about it. I, I, I don't do it for the money. I do it for the joy. Can you talk a little bit about the behind the scenes work that was done to make this event all come together? It's a lot of work. Um, like I've been doing in Saskatchewan now for eight years and it pretty much uh, organizes itself because people reach out to me that I didn't, haven't even heard of before. I've got my regular vendors that come every year. Um, it is a lot of research, online research, a lot of phone calls to to find, uh, you know, people who sell things or make things, just, you know, your everyday vendors to, and then, you know, you have to find their contact information and all that. And I usually wind up sending out over a thousand emails for each show. Um, unfortunately, not everybody replies or not everybody is interested in, in attending. I usually get, you know, a uh, hundred or so replies. The The last show I had here in Saskatoon, I had a hundred, just over a hundred vendors actually and, and about 3,000 visitors come through and lots of pets, of course. Uh, which I love seeing and, uh, you know, the kids come, they have fun. Every, everybody has a good time. So it's it's mostly research and then just kind of putting everything together and making sure that all my vendors 
are happy they're in the spot they want they have what they want kind of thing so it's, and then you know you have to find the the venue and proper advertising to let people know that it's going on were there any last comments that you'd like to make regarding the expo so it's happening this weekend october 14th and 15th at the lloyd minister exhibition grounds on 49th avenue uh saturday is 10 till 5 4 no 10 till 5 sorry and sunday is 10 till 4 and admission for adults is five dollars children under 15 is three dollars a family of four is fifteen dollars and seniors in preschool are free all right thank you so much for taking the time bernie and be sure to check out the lloydminster pet expo which is coming up this weekend Coming out of the long weekend, I can't remember the last time we had such warm weather mm -hmm. by Thanksgiving. Yes, it was a very nice weekend. I w we were in Edmonton and the weather was fantastic and overhearing this weekend here in Lloyd was also really nice. And that's awesome to see that we still have, you know, the 20 degree yeah, weather. 20 degree weather, you don't need a jacket. No. It was very, very nice. Well, I may need a jacket because Maybe the wind now. makes me a little bit chilly, but like even just like a light sweater too, or a thin jacket is something that, uh, you know, we need heavier jackets this time of year uh, in past years. So it's nice to see that we have that weather still, like you had mentioned, Callan. Uh, and now we're still continuing on that weather uh, this week as well, especially today, a little bit on the windier side, but we still had that 22 degree weather here in Lloydminster. A very, very sunny day out. I very much enjoyed. The sun was kind of blinding me through the window uh, in our newsroom today. So I love seeing that uh, sunny weather still occurring here. Uh, and then across the region, similar temperatures in Alberta, 23 out in Provost, 24 in Wainwright, 22 in Vermilion, Edmonton, Cold Lake and Bonneville, 24 also out in Regerville, 20 in St. Paul and Lac La Biche, and then Marwain sitting at 21. And then on the Saskatchewan side, similar temperatures as well, 24 in Macklin, 20 in Maidstone, North Battleford, Meadow Lake, Green Lake, 21 in St. Walberg, 22 in Pierceland, and then 19 up in Isle of Cross. Overnight tonight in North Battleford, it will be a very clear evening. The wind will be quite strong at 28 kilometers per hour uh, and will be at 4 degrees. So it will be a somewhat of a nice evening out. That wind may make things a little bit more on the chillier side, but you'll have very clear skies, which is something to look forward to. And then tomorrow, a little bit cooler of temperatures than we saw today. 15 degrees will be the daytime high in North Battleford with a uh, mostly sunny day, but the wind will increase throughout the day up to about 30 kilometers per hour. So definitely uh, make sure you're uh, aware of that. It may feel a little bit cooler than that 15 degrees. Overnight tonight in Cold Lake, partially cloudy skies overnight, uh, but it shouldn't be too bad of an evening sitting at five degrees, which is always nice. And then tomorrow, a bright sunny day, a high of 15 is the, is the daytime high for tomorrow in Cold Lake. And that wind will be at about 19 kilometers per hour, so it won't be too, too windy, so it should be a very nice warm day out. Overnight tonight here in Lloydminster will be four degrees overnight tonight. Uh, breezy in the in the evening, but for the most part, it should be a clear night. So it's going to be a very nice evening. And then tomorrow, a daytime high of 16 degrees. So it will be a little bit cooler than what we saw today. Uh, a little bit windy, but it will we will still see the sun throughout the day, which is always nice. And then over the next three days, things definitely do cool off when we hit Thursday with a high of 11, a uh, mix of sun and cloud throughout the day with a low of two. And then on Friday, it will be a little bit more cooler. We'll have some low clouds throughout the day, so it probably won't be as sunny with a high of 11 as well, and then a low of zero. And then we have a weather photo submission, of course, from Greg from Bright Sand Lake. Thank you so much for the submission. It's absolutely gorgeous on the lake with that sunset in the background. So thank you so much for sending that photo. And if you'd like to see your weather photos on our show, please send us uh, your weather photos to weather at stingray.com or on our Facebook page, Stingray, Stingray Weather and Pet Photos. That is your first look at your weather forecast. I'll have a more in-depth look later on in the show. Thank you, Abby. After the break, we take a look at how you should be preparing for this year's flu season. Thank you. 
Lloydminster Bobcats have been on a hot streak in their last few home games and hope to continue their success against the Canmore Eagles. Our Thomas Wildman has more on the weekend's game. After two wins earlier in the week against the Saints and the Grizzlies, the Bobcats hope to make it three in a row against the Eagles, and right away on the power play, they got to work. Luke Fritz, with his first ever AJHL goal, put the Bobcats on the board. Later in the first, the Eagles' Logan Ziegler would also score on the power play to knot it up at one to end the first period. Then, early in the second, the Eagles would get three unanswered goals. The Bobcats would bounce back with two goals from Ben Coyne and Blake Setter, but Zach Kudu of the Eagles would slow down the Bobcats' momentum. It seems the Bobcats were finished, but then, when shorthanded, another Bobcat got his first goal. Teague McAllister would bring the game within one. The third period had plenty of close calls, but the Eagles would hold on to their one goal lead and get the 5-4 victory. But the game was still a solid one for the Bobcats, especially with two players getting their first AJHL goals. Yeah, it was, that, one, that one was special. It was a close game and, I don't know, on the PK too, that's pretty cool. But yeah, it's good to get the monkey off the back. I've been struggling a little bit, so yeah, that's a good one. Head coach Brad Riel was happy with the effort his team brought, but knows some mistakes need to be cleaned up in order for them to win games. It's not one you want to lose. I mean, I like to, I like the push we had there. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, we we made some crucial mistakes in the second period that cost us. And this is a level where you know that that happens, and we were chasing it. And you know, I give our guys a lot of credit as I always do. They worked and they went buzzer to buzzer, but tonight just wasn't good enough. The Bobcats undeterred will look forward to one more game in the Civic Center against their rival Bonneville Pontiac and then head down south to take on the league leading Brooks Bandits and Drumheller Dragons. Uh, we're just going to keep putting pucks in deep and blocking shots, uh, playing good defensively and playing our game. We know how to play and if we keep doing that, we're going to do well these next few games. Thomas Wildman, Primetime, Local News. Now it's time for more weather. Here's our Abby St. John. Thanks so much, Callan. We're sitting at 22 degrees here in Lloydminster. We saw a very, very sunny day out today, which was nice, a little bit windy, but for the most part, it was a very nice day out and we're still keeping up with those uh, 20 degree weathers. It will cool off as we go through the week, but for right now, we're sitting fairly nice uh, with a little bit of cloud coverage, but we did see a very sunshiny day out today, which was nice to see. Uh, and then across Alberta, similar temperatures as well at 20 in Red Deer, 22 in Edmonton and in Cold Lake, 21 in Athabasca, Edson and White Quarter sitting at 18, 19 in Rocky Mountain House, and 15 out in Jasper. And then taking a look on the Saskatchewan side, 20 in North Battleford, Meadow Lake, and Saskatoon, 15 in Melfort, and 17 out in Prince Albert. And then up north in Saskatchewan, 19 in Uranium City, Laloche, and Buffalo Narrows, uh, 14 out in uh, South End and Wollaston Lake, 17 in Stony Rapids, and tw uh, 12 out in Linflon and then on the Alberta side 17 in Fort Chippewan at high level and Slave Lake uh, Fort Mac is sitting at 21 degrees 18 in Peace River and 14 out in Grand Prairie and then down south in Alberta 23 in Coronation 24 in Medicine Hat 20 in Calgary and in Lethbridge and 14 in Banff and then on the Saskatchewan side 23 in Kindersley 24 out in Swift Current 20 in Moose Jaw uh, Regina is sitting at 19, Estevan is sitting at 16, and then 14 out in Yorkton. And then overnight tonight in North Battleford, it should be a very clear evening out with only 4 degrees as your evening temperature, but it will be quite windy, around 28 kilometer per hour winds. So it's going to be on the windier side, so it may feel a little bit cool, but with those clear skies, it's going to be a fairly nice evening.
overnight tonight in Cold Lake. A little bit of cloud coverage throughout the evening. Five degrees will be the overnight temperature out there. Uh, so it should be a very nice evening as well. And then overnight temperatures across the region, uh, two degrees in Meadow Lake, five in Bonneville, six in Provost, and four in Isla Cross and Paradise Hill. Both uh, Isla Cross and Paradise Hill sitting fairly clear out tonight. And then a little bit of uh, cloud coverage in the rest of the regions and a little bit of a breeze as well. And then more overnight temperatures, Nearnam and Wainwright are sitting at six degrees overnight, four in Pierceland, five in Unity, and then nine out in Calgary and there's uh, expected showers in Calgary overnight tonight and then for the most part it should be a little bit of cloud coverage in the rest of the region but for the most part it should be a very nice evening uh, expect some wind as well overnight tonight here in Lloyd Minster it'll start to become a little bit breezy this evening otherwise it will be a fairly clear night out and our temperature will be at four degrees so it's going to be a very nice evening out tonight here in the border city over the next seven days like I said we will start to cool off as we go on through the week 16 will be your daytime high for tomorrow with a low of two uh, a mix of sun and cloud and expect some wind so it may feel a little bit cooler and then uh, sat Thursday through Saturday, our daytime highs will be 11 degrees. Two will be the low for Thursday with a mix of sun and cloud. On Friday, expect some low cloud coverage uh, throughout the day with a low of zero. And then on Saturday to start your weekend, it should be a mostly sunny day with a little bit of, of a breeze with also a low of zero as well. And then on Sunday, it will be a high of 12 and a low of three with a mix of sun and cloud. And that should be the same on Monday as well. And then on Tuesday next week, it will be a fairly cloudy day with a high of 15 and a low of five. So things definitely start to cool off and feel more like fall, but we are still experiencing some sunshine days. So that's always nice to look forward to. But as a look at your seven day forecast, we'll have more news coming up after the break. Dan Davidson is on the show today. Dan has lots of really great things planned here over the next few months. So let's start uh, by chatting with what's going on. Dan, a really cool video out right now. Um, I can't even describe the nostalgia that I felt when I watched it because I was a huge Much Music fan, grew up in the 80s. <laughs> Tell me about the, the video that's out right now for He Met a Girl. Yeah, so like that was the whole thing with, with this record that I'm working on is, is you know, all the songs are kind of inspired by uh, just those classic songs and that classic vibe that that those big 80s records that we all loved had uh so i thought that when i was making the video for this we would just double down on that and we went and uh, borrowed an old terrible 90s camcorder from a friend and and it just looks awful in the right way and uh so we shot a lot of it just like just behind where my computer is right now in my in my studio here um and it was it was it was so easy this video it, like sometimes videos are so hard but this one was my part of it was all very performance based and it all had to do with the gear because everything had to be vintage to get that look properly and uh and then we found a, a a really cool young couple that had some film experience they're gonna be in san diego and we we're just kind of told them the storyline we were going for we got them to self-shoot it actually on their cell phones and so we got them to send us the footage and we worked it in and and gave it a treatment that made it look like it was getting played through a vcr and we kind of told the story of the song that way it's really incredible when you think about it, especially the fact that you got them to shoot that because that video, it I mean, it's great quality. It looks like an 80s video, but, you know, we're not looking at shaky styles or anything. So it was really great, I guess, that that happened to work out in your favor and you found those two. Yeah, and it's so funny to watch it on the Internet because, you know, all, all our screens are the 1080 by 1920 size screen. But back back in the 90s and the 80s, everything was square. So we, when you look at the video online, it, there's these big black bars on the side. So it really takes you back to, <laughs> to that frame of mind. Now, the album coming out October 26, 1980 something, obviously sticking with a the theme here. Uh, tell me a little bit about the album and, and why is the 80s something that, uh, you know, you really wanted to hit on at this time? 
Well, you know, I, in country, it's it's funny because we're all making demos all the time for all these demos for all these songs that we write. And uh, after a while, you know, if you if you're doing a lot of them, they all kind of start to sound the same. So I was really just trying to mix it up and bring in some interesting flavors of you know classic hits that I love from my childhood. And I remember hearing you know songs by Brian Adams and Corey Hart and U2 and and things like that on the radio. And I wanted to figure out what made me connect to those songs and take some of those sounds and sprinkle them in uh, to this country music world a little bit. So, you know, there's, there's, <laughs> there's everything from a saxophone solo that somehow we made country into, you know, and there's a lot of, um, there's some eighties synths that are in there to make things brighter and feel wider and, and just these little, little nuggets. Like it's not a, a full pin guitar solo or anything like that, but there are just these little spices that we put in to, to hopefully reflect on some of that nostalgia of those, those great songs like you know brian adams songs of the late late 80s early 90s with the the writing process this time for this album dan did you go with the usual suspects or did you bring in some different people to help you out um some of the usual suspects i'm starting to find that there's there's something to having a squad you know having a group of people that you don't have to have an awkward conversation with for an hour before you start a write. You just you already know each other. So, yeah, you know, Clayton Bellamy's got a couple cuts on the record and, and Tim Hicks and Jason Blaine. Um, a couple friends in Nashville, a guy named Michael August and, and uh, a Canadian writer uh, named Emily, who is really great. So, yeah, there's there's a few of the, the usual suspects on there. And, and I think that that allowed me to kind of be comfortable and brave enough to try some of these things. Well, you have a tour supporting this album coming up as well. So I see we've got a few dates uh, going even through, you know, close to this area. Um, tell me a little bit about what's planned for the tour. You've got a, a guest opener as well. Yeah, so this is my first headlining tour I've ever done. And I think that's a scary thing for a lot of artists in, in my lane. Uh, you know, it's it's there's a lot of insecurity about how many tickets you can sell and how expensive it is to tour but i'm at a point in my career now where i'm i'm pretty comfortable with uh, where my fan base is and and how much i can connect to them that i'm going to go out on my own and give it a shot and and you know i'm bringing out a, a great young band from quebec five roses they're called and they're going to be supporting me on on the tour and we're going to be playing in vancouver calgary edmonton red deer saskatoon winnipeg and grand prairie so what is next? Uh, yeah, I know you got the tour coming up and we're getting close to the end of the year here, Dan. Uh, do you just ride this out for a little bit or do you start working on new music immediately in the middle of all this as well? Yeah, you know, I'm starting to work on new music now. I, I find that uh, there's a pace to life that's happening these days and, and it's nice. It's so nice to be ready and to not be chasing things when it, you get down to it because I think that when you have pressure on yourself as an artist, to write a great song, you never write a great song. It has to just kind of chip away. It has to be part of your zeitgeist and your day. It's like working out. It has to just kind of be part of the daily routine in order to be something that you're comfortable with. So working on new music all the time, but I have a, a documentary coming out actually October the 16th. Um, at least that's when we're do, going to doing the viewing party. So <laughs> there's a lot on the go right now. Well, one thing about you, Dan, is I think we never know what to expect <laughs> with your videos, with your music. There's always something new and, and added in there, which is fantastic. It just leaves the fans wanting more. So hopefully we can catch you in some of the dates that are close here. And I really appreciate you speaking with me today. And I can't see what you have planned next. Awesome. Well, yeah, I can't wait to, to chat more and give you more updates about this crazy ride. <laughs> Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery, downtown Lloyd Minster. Back at Border Paws Animal Shelter for another edition of Pet Project. And today we have a spicy little cat named Chipotle. Tell me a little bit about her story and how she came to be here at the shelter. So Chipotle came in as a stray from the Lloydminster bylaw officers. Um, she's been here since May, which is surprising because she's actually a really sweet cat, as you can see. Um, she is a little more independent, so she's not as needy as some of the more cuddly cats, but she does like attention, as you can see. 
Um, she's not really big on being held, but she loves pets. Mm -hmm. um, and she's a little sensitive about her behind. She has like a shorter tail. Um, so we don't know if that's why or what happened there. Um, but yeah, she really likes getting her pets and she kind of just hangs out like this. Like she's not one to be running mm -hmm. around like a kitten or really high energy. So she'd be a really nice cat for a more laid back family that just wants to hang out and give her love. Hubris wants attention today <laughs> too, it looks like. <laughs> and we were mentioning a little bit before we started with uh, kids. Yeah. And you said that your kids are really good with her, mm -hmm. but they also know not to pick her up. So, yeah. so you'd say that kids are okay as long as they know how to handle kind of more independent cats. Yes, yes she seems really good. My kids are young, they're five and seven and they can come sit with her and pet her and she doesn't have an issue. It's more if, if kids were like carrying her around and packing her around, she'd probably be upset because yeah. she just wants to hang out like on the scratching post or the couch, like doing her own thing, so. So definitely yeah. she comes to you, yeah, not exactly. the other way around, which, and she's been super sweet since we've mm -hmm. opened up her door. <laughs> Even though Hubris is being crazy. Hubris is a little jealous. <laughs> <laughs> He's not in the spotlight. But no, she does seem like she'd be a sweet addition to mm -hmm. any household. Have you noticed her with other cats or dogs? It we haven't had her around um, dogs much, so we don't know how she is. I think she'd be good with like a calm dog that gave her space. Um, and cats, she seems kind of to just ignore them more than yeah. anything. Like with Hubris smacking <laughs> the blanket and everything, she kind of just does her own thing. Yeah. Which is good. Now uh, you have a pet expo coming up yeah. next week. Tell us a little bit more information on that so people are uh, fully aware of it. You bet. So we have it happening. Um, it'll be in the Saskatchewan building at the exhibition ground. And it's happening from 10 till 5 on Saturday. And then it's 10 to 4 on Sunday. Um, it's like a whole family event. So you're able to bring your pets to the event. Um, they're going to have bouncy houses. They had face painting listed on the poster. So all that kind of stuff. Um, so it sounds like it'll be a good time. Yeah. And we are setting up a table. So we're going to have some adoptable cats and kittens on site. Um, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a, a great weekend for it. And any pet lovers would really enjoy checking it out for sure. Yes, for sure. And it'll help you guys, especially having the cats because we were talking earlier, yes. you you had brought some cats to Saskatoon or Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. but now your numbers are right back up. Yes. So <laughs> kind of walk through kind of the capacity that you guys are at in terms of animals at the shelter. Be nice, you too. So uh, our capacity is right now we probably have about three times what we're built to hold. Mm -hmm. um, so thankfully we have a lot of foster homes that are helping with that. Um, and yeah, so we got our numbers down to about 140 or so, and we had transferred out quite a few cats and kittens. Um, and then we're right back up to 150 today animals, um, of those 126 are cats. So it's a high number for cats. Um, we've gotten a lot of, um, unweaned kittens lately that don't have mothers. So mm -hmm. bottle babies that are needing extensive care, like in their foster homes. Yeah. And it takes a lot of it's a big commitment <laughs> having to feed them 24 seven. Um, and then we've got a lot of adults and older kittens as well that are looking for homes. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's, it's very full here and we're hoping we do have a cat sale on right now. Um, I believe it's 50% off for any orange and black cats just for the month of October and then 25% off any other cat adoptions. So yeah, hopefully we'll have some people come out to the Pet Expo and they can meet some yes. of our adoptables and see if anybody looks like the right fit for their family. And with the sale going on, I think that's perfect incentive. Yes. Especially, I love the 50% off for yes. orange and black cats just for the, that's the we theme have, of Halloween. And we have a lot of orange kittens right now. Yes, so. yes, some in the front and they are absolutely adorable. Yes. And then you have a couple black kittens as well that I've seen. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's perfect. <laughs> Um, now, again, I ask this every week, is there any donations that you're in need of? Uh, we did ask actually on our page for some heating pads. So heating pads or like the rice bags that you can heat up, the, mi the mm -hmm. microwave bags, um, just to help keep the kittens warm in their foster homes. Um, and then obviously like kitten chow and cat f kibble, that kind of stuff is always needed. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's about all we're really looking for right now. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me again. And Chipotle, I think, will make a perfect addition to any household. Very independent, very sweet this entire time. Just been <laughs> just sitting, hanging out. just been <laughs> hanging out, which is awesome. So I am sure she will find her home very, very soon. Yes, she's very cute. We've got one more story before we're wrapped up today. Some good news. Hollywood writers have approved a new three-year contract with major studios five months after the union called an industry-stopping strike. The union says 99% of its over 8,000 members voted to ratify the deal. The new contract includes wage increases, protections against artificial intelligence, and other benefits. I think this is fantastic. Of course, I think a lot of people are very happy that this strike has ended. We still need the actor strike That's to the end That's the one we were talking about, But this yes. is the next step in the right direction. Exactly. We're making progress, yep. which is all we can ask for as, you know, consumers of media. Yes, That's and I'm sure everybody is eager on different projects that have been cancelled or delayed because of it. I know I'm excited for Abbott Elementary, so we're getting there. We just need the actors to figure it out. Exactly. And that's all the time we have for you on Primetime Local News. Thanks for joining us and have a great night.